Call them the other space billionaires. Aaron and Fadi Osman of Sierra Nevada Corporation, a private aerospace and defense contractor doing everything from military aircraft refurbishment to supplying the tech to grow vegetables, like if you saw them last week, those radishes on the International Space Station. The husband and wife team have been quietly betting on commercial space, and in their first ever on-camera interview together, I spoke with them exclusively about, among other things, their usable orbital space plane Dream Chaser, which will be able to land on commercial runways when it starts flying for NASA in 2022. I feel like we, uh, we were a little ahead of ourselves uh, about 10 years ago when we started uh, seeing that space domain was becoming really important. And I believe what is creating this uh, incredible momentum is NASA's decision to have that public-private partnership. And as you know, we are one of the private companies, top three with uh, SpaceX and Blue, started heavily investing in our own capital like building capabilities. And Dream Chaser is in the center of that. And it has been an incredible uh, project. And the reason NASA really bet on SNC, because there is nothing like that out there. There is no other company who would offer that kind of a capability. And uh, so we are, very proud to uh, just uh, building a space plane and we see spa uh, Dream Chaser as the space taxi of future. Of course, COVID, just like everything else, had an impact on our suppliers, small businesses, and some of our employees are, half of our employees are working from home, actually. Uh, and we are working very closely with NASA uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we can just get to the finish line together. So we are very optimistic uh, our first flight is uh, 2022, and it's around the corner. Uh, we, the, we are celebrating uh, Elon's uh, successes this year. I think that momentum that got created uh, is definitely helping the space economy. And we are excited to be the next ones with uh, flying our dream chaser. So that's in reference to SpaceX and the commercial crew program, which has now sent astronauts to orbit twice from U.S. soil. SNC is contracted with NASA for cargo missions, but it does have its eye on human space flight as well. It's been developing those capabilities. It's also developing an inflatable space habitat made of Kevlar for use in low Earth orbit or even in deep space or orbiting the moon. The Osmonds own 100 percent of SNC, having bought the company post bankruptcy in the early 1990s. But given Wall Street's excitement for new space and also new defense tech, whether it's Virgin Galactic and the run we've seen in that stock or even Palantir, they tell me they would now actually consider outside investment. We are open-minded because we see that uh, bringing uh, capital is going to allow us to scale up, significantly accelerate our growth. We have this vision. We are going to do with or without any outside investment. We, we have done it so far. We started with nothing, the American dream, like you said. So now we want to take this dream to the next level. So we are going to get there. But like Aaron said, we may get there sooner than later if you had mm -hmm. leveraged some of the capital markets. But there is that excitement that taking place that one cannot ignore, whether specs taking place. I mean, the valuations are at a top level. The investment is, is record levels. Now, in terms of the political landscape, actual politics aside, President Trump has brought more attention to space, as well as its connection to national security, be it Space Force or the resuscitation of the National Space Council, which uh, Fadi is involved with. So I asked what a Biden administration will mean for all of that recent momentum. There's an amazing momentum built that uh, Biden ad administration is going to leverage that. I mean, it started with Obama administration to look at the commercial companies, and that's where the public-private partnership with NASA started. And I think that our administration, current administration, really made so much progress. And that momentum right now is uh, incredible. So I, I do believe that we are going to get bipartisan support. and. Uh, uh, things are going to move forward uh, even faster. Uh, certainly there's a lot of focus right now on this National uh, Defense Authorization Act and um, as it moves through Congress right now and, of course, this possibility of uh, a presidential veto, I think, hanging over it as those discussions continue. Um, but whether it's for fiscal 2021 or beyond, what is your outlook in general for defense spending? Uh, in terms of the space part, there's a bipartisan support. For the reasons that we talked about earlier, the, you know, there's national security threats in space. Uh, we have peer competitors. Uh, China is really evolving uh, in a very significant way. So 
national security space part of it is uh, uh, you're going to see it the same or growing. Uh, the other parts, I think all the fiscal pressures, uh, stimulus monies and COVID impacts and everything, eventually we have to pay those bills. So we expect a potential downturn on the defense side of it. But that's where we are excited because our agility, innovation and uh, affordable solutions, we always uh, thrive in that environment when uh, spending is coming down. But I think uh, overall, uh, you will see some pressure on, on the defense spending. And of course, that outlook, which is largely shared with Wall Street, is the exact reason that defense stocks specifically have been, as one analyst put it to me just recently, dead money this year. You can see that with a chart right there. But while s &C historically has made most of its revenue in defense work, commercial space is the big focus for the future of this company. And guys, uh, even though we have seen delays and pushbacks in uh, you know, milestone test moments for many of the commercial space companies this year due to COVID, like so many other industries. Overall, it has still been a, a pretty groundbreaking year, and that is set to continue into these final weeks of, of 2020, whether it's SpaceX uh, with its crew flights as of, as of late, and also that commercial, just, a, just this weekend, a commercial uh, cargo resupply mission to the ISS, whether it's Jeff Bezos also just posting on Instagram about Blue Origins BE-7 rocket engines uh, and development of those uh, as part of the Artemis program to land the first woman and also another man on the moon in the coming years, or even if it's Virgin Galactic, which later this week is scheduled to uh, do its third manned flight to the edge of space, first one from New Mexico. You also have a number of startups that are looking to do some pretty key tests in these next couple of weeks as well. So the space economy continues, uh, and it continues also with Wall Street looking at that Morgan Stanley Space Summit that's uh, scheduled to be held this week, too. So I expect to see some headlines as the week uh, unfolds here. David. Yeah, well, you can't, you're not, you can't go to the moon or Mars anytime soon with those little kids at home. You know that, right, Morgan? Uh, I know that, but okay. maybe I could go to the edge of space. Edge of space. That could be what, like, that's just an overnight trip, right? Or not even. Uh, not right? even. Yeah. Talking about maybe an hour, a couple yeah. hours. A couple hours. All right. Maybe we'll <laughs> sign you up for that one. Okay. Morgan, it's great to have you back. Uh, reporting on space, which I feel like I, I didn't quite have enough on. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.